Oh, I'll introduce you first. No, no, no you, okay. you read it after we get get in there. Uh, well, aloha. I need to print it out. <laughs> good, uh, good morning. No, just read it from the website page. Just I am. I got to click page. back and forth. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah, just this is ahead. Andrew Aloha live out of Tucson, Arizona. We speak productions on Blog Talk Radio. Oh, wait, wait a minute. This is not Blog Talk Radio. This is Webinar Jam. Holy cow. Establishing and maintaining right relationships through human values. Aloha and welcome to today's GPS Paranormal Golden Age Hangout. Today we are, uh, we're doing it since Monday of this week and, and we'll be continuing on through Sunday of this week uh, where we're having at least four people every day present um, uh, uh, all kinds of stuff, about all kinds of stuff about uh, concerning the paranormal, including UFOs, aliens. Sex, uh, today we have uh, Lori Lorch here with uh, talking about sacred sexuality. Is that correct, Lori? Yes, it is. <laughs> so anyhow, um, if you again, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's if it's the people in this town that are that are toying with my website pages or if, it, if it's. Yahoo, but either way, somebody's somebody's disabled my, my literally disabled my landing page for the web webinar series. So you know, you know, if they want to bully me around, they can bully me all around all the way, all all they want. But you know, they're going to hear about it sooner or later. So you know, they can deal with their behavior sooner or later. So anyhow, um, go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, Lori, and then we'll go from there. Thank you very much. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Lori Lorich. I've been. Um, I would say in the sex business for most of my life, um, I've been a sacred sexuality educator since the mid-90s. I became certified as a sexological body worker through the Institute for, for the Advanced Studies of Human Sexuality in San Francisco, California in um, 2011. So. And then um, I'm still continuing to do studies in clinical sexology, human sexuality, all things regarding sex to help people uncover and discover their pleasure. So um, today my, my talk is on, <clears throat> and let me go to my little blurb, sacred sexuality, <laughs> the path of pleasure to enlightenment. <clears throat> So I really feel that uh, sacred sexuality is a holistic approach to help heal our disconnects between body and spirit. We all have shame, guilt, and sexual repression. And there's Eastern practices, and these are the things that I've been studying, like I said, for most of my lifetime, that are able to free a person from what I call our spam and junk mail that we're constantly inundated with from childhood. So we get these messages from people, from religion, from society, and we take on these, 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 this energy which tends to, again, make us less, feel less. So in this pursuit of sexual pleasure, a person can consciously access profound anesthetic, uh, erotic, well, okay, let me, let me try that one again. So in the pursuit of pleasure, <laughs> anyone can consciously access profound ecstatic and erotic states. And in what I've been teaching, I have call this process sexual meditation. And it's one of the most simplest yet powerful paths for transformation. So that's it, what we're going to be so, diving um, into today. Uh, Okay, good. good. So first of all, I want to give, I want you to give um, our our audience a an overview of what it is that um, that who you are and where you come from and, and uh, how did you got how did how did how you got to where you're at right now. Sure. So, like many people um, in America, we're not given an education around sexuality. We're, we're kind of given a sex ed, the biology of sperm meets egg, and you can create a human form, but we're not really given information about how to be with someone intimately, intimately on a physical level, intimately on an emotional level, and intimately on a spiritual level. So when I became sexually active, which wasn't until college, um, my first inclination was 
read books, go to the library, get and find out information. <laughs> and at that time, unfortunately, I was at the age when you didn't have the net. You didn't have the www, the World Wide Web. We could just go on and, and uh, <laughs> find things. We had books, <laughs> things that had paper. You had to open up and, and read. So, um, well, I hope they at least had pictures in there too. Why not? Uh, yes, there were, and and um, I'll kind of segue to. I had never thought about touching myself as a child. That that never occurred to me. So I didn't become. I didn't uh, do masturbation, or as we call it in the more sex positive term, is um, self pleasuring. I didn't do self pleasuring until I was in college, and I learned how to self pleasure from a book and that had pictures. In fact, it was the Cosmopolitan's Woman's Guide to Sex, <laughs> and it had a, a image of a vagina or a yoni. It had all the different breakdown of the body parts, the clitoris, the outer labia, the inner labia, and it said like what, what was sensitive areas, how you should stroke, and that kind of thing. And I followed those directions, and my first orgasm was a wow. So... I'm wanting to help educate <laughs> really? people what around that, that no wow experience <laughs> that I had. And then there's a difference between just the biology of, of, of sex, of orgasm, and how you can utilize that energy in a way to have a more emotional, a deeper emotional connection, as well as a fuel to help you... Um, transmute it into something that's a spiritual connection back to the divine or source or our creator. Got it. So that's a little bit so of you stare? my history. Yes. Okay. And, yeah. Okay. So uh, one million <laughs> orgasms later, what happens? What's happening well, now? Um, <laughs> I'm kind of, uh, well, okay, so when I moved to California back in like the uh, early 90s, I stumbled on uh, something called Tantra Yoga, and I was led to a specific type of Tantra Yoga called Sky Dancing Tantra, which was created by Margot Anand, and her training yeah, was I'm, I'm is, is, a, is a neo-tantra practice that incorporates uh, transpersonal psychological processes Again, because we have inherited guilt, shame, and repression through um, society and religion. And in order to really tap into and access pleasure, you have to start to peel away these layers that, we've, that we have in our bodies. Um, like I said, from years and years and years of people telling you the body is evil, sex is bad, you have to do it with a, when, uh, with a certain person when you have a certain a piece of paper, you know, when, a marriage license. You have to do it to populate and procreate. And of course, you only do it and tolerate it for that purpose, and it's certainly not about pleasure. So all of those things are negative Western belief systems that may or probably not may not be true but it's something that we buy into so Tantra is a path of personal freedom and going inward to find and discover your truth and that was something that I started back in my early 20s like what is my truth around sexuality what is the truth around my body what truth does my body hold for me in this process of being a sexual being. And again, the belief system is that we all are sexual beings and that we came here on this planet in order to understand this material world of matter. Our spirit is housed in this physical form. And how do we take our thoughts and manifest them in order to create in our reality in this physical realm and the sexual energy is that most powerful force for creative and manifestation for creativity and manifestation period 
It can be physical or non-physical. Got it, got it. All right. So, um, so you, and now that was in California where you were learning all that, is that correct? Um, yes, I had some, um, metaphysical classes when, when I lived back in Wisconsin, but it was, it didn't really have anything to do with, um, uh, sexuality, but the, the focus when I moved to California was on this, um, the sexual piece, and, and uh, again, I've been continuing to, um, explore that and as I said now I become a, a sexual body worker I do hands-on healing with the genitals with the anus with the um, the vagina for both men and women to help again there's there's contraction of men, men have muscles. Vaginas, wait, no I knew you were gonna say that <laughs> <laughs> We're just talking about body parts here. So women have anuses and women have uh, okay, the okay. external, the vulvas, and then the vaginas. Men have the the penis, they have the balls, they have the perineum, they have the anus, they have the prostate, okay. and okay. the the whole. I will say the Were whole sure? I pelvic genital work. So I work with the the pelvis. I work with the genitals. Um, I work with these areas to bring back to reconnect the body parts. So again, we've gotten messages throughout with, our with, lives. With the, the what? So, uh, so I hear, if I hear you correctly, you're saying that you're working towards helping people reconnect to their body parts. Is that what I hear you saying? Um, no. Well, yes, yes, and connect the body parts. So if you really think that, you know, some people that come to me, they're just like, they're they're all here. There's nothing going on below the waist. There's no connection. There's they're not grounded. They don't feel. It's they're just brains <laughs> that are kind of functioning, and the body is That's kind of saying. like the robot That's to move them. They're not correct. Yeah, exactly. Or or disassociated. And then there's people that are somewhat in their body, yeah. but they're disassociated or disconnected from their genitals or from the anus. And and. Okay. And if you think of like okay. touch, um, there's a therapist who was a, he's a psychotherapist. He was a student of Freud and his name was Wilhelm Reich. So in my Tantra training, the Sky Dancing Tantra training, there's some processes that came from Reichian work to help understand um, and wake up the pelvis. And if you think of like infancy, where are we held? What's the body part that gets the most stimulation on a baby it's it's the butt right the babies are patted at the butt right they're held they're wiped they're pampered they're you know yeah, they're, they're always so so how we're touched there in the pelvis so the theory is going back to Wilhelm Reich is that the pelvis holds messages from infancy that were are still in our bodies computer nervous system but it didn't have a languaging to delineate good bad neutral um, sensations it just holds information and if something didn't feel good there's a contraction if something did feel good there's a relaxation so in my work when I'm doing pelvic work on, on men or women um, I kind of say you know anal retentive isn't just a figure of speech it's literal you know it's quite if there's tension held in the ass in the pelvic muscles and if you also think of how what people do we sit a lot all day so again these muscles are contracted there's a constriction of blood flow going into the pelvic areas there's a numbing and of course all of those things block sensation it doesn't allow for movement and it doesn't allow for feeling so of course, and then there's blocked emotions. There's a lot of emotional baggage around our, like I said, our genitals and our pelvis, and so we're not feeling physically and emotionally. So we're cut off. Is that making some sense? Are you there? Got it. Got it. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Um, I never even thought about that, but that's a good point. 
No, no wonder all these people have all these fetishes with butts. I don't know. Well, <laughs> yes and no. I mean, it's there's. I mean, we, that's a whole other topic. But um, you know, again, in my work. So if you think of, if you understand, and for those people who don't know what the chakra system is, it's a. Um, I how I describe the chakra system is like uh, these are receivers, the same way that. Radios receive energy from a broadcasting station, and it can have different frequencies for different uh, programs. Our bodies receive cosmic energy from the divine broadcasting station, and it affects different areas of our body. So again, our pelvis represents the first and second chakra. The first chakra is around survival, just on a very basic level. It's for food, clothing, shelter, um, career, making money, that kind of thing. And the sexual area, the sex, the genitals, are for creativity and manifestation on a non-physical level or on a biological level to create, procreate, populate, to create another human form. So these two energies, if you think, have been controlled by others, other people. We've been, like I said, guilted and shamed around our bodies and around these actions and activities, sexual activities, sexual pleasure, so that we are doing the bidding for somebody else. So my job is to help people reconnect to their bodies, remove blockages that are preventing you from inhabiting and being and living in your body as I said before, I believe that's why we came here is to have a physical experience and to evolve internally the soul and the physical body in this ascension process which maybe has been talked about in your other programs. And the sexual energy is one of the most powerful ways to evolve got it, got it. someone. <clears throat> Oh man, are you kidding me? Yes. So go oh, go ahead. Okay. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. No, I'm I'm just <clears throat> doing some <throat> troubleshooting, but go ahead. Okay. So um, you know when so someone anyhow, comes to uh, see me, what I do is that we have a conversation and decide I, to say, I guess you decide. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Well, I want to know you know it. People come to see me for different reasons. Some of them are no, for you're, just you're doing fine. Go ahead. the basic, um, well, okay, I'll preface it. Most of my clients are men, and then I work with couples, and then uh, the least amount that, that is attracted to me is women for some odd reason. I don't know. But, um, you know, the men that come to me can see me for uh, anything as simple as uh, the more biological thing of erectile dysfunction, which can be broken down into... Um, uh, inability to get erection or the inability to maintain erection and then there is the most of uh, PE or now they're referring it to as um, rapid ejaculation a lot of men are experiencing that and then uh, there's also something called inhibited ejaculation so I work with those issues with men but also what they're getting is relaxation techniques they're getting education around their body they're getting um, hands-on work uh, we're talking about relationship. We're talking about diet and nutrition. You know, how are they eating? I'm um, asking them like, what are their stress levels like? How do they um, deal with that? So I'm presenting a holistic approach to help resolve issues that people are having in their life. So in one sense, you might say I'm a lifestyle coach, but my focus or my my area of expertise really is a sexual area. And then, if they're open to it, I talk to them about how this sexual energy can be raised out of our uh, primal, instinctual, biological behavior into something that can actually be um, more emotional fulfilling as well as spiritually fulfilling. Got it, got it. <clears throat> All right. Um, um. 
Yeah, and, and and you're doing fine right now. I'm 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 working through um some troubleshooting right now, but uh, go ahead. Okay. And um, so you I guess you decided yeah you decided to stay in California, and continue your your studies and and everything else there. And is that what I hear you saying as well? Uh yes I, and that's another strange story. I was kind of led. Uh, as I said, I I've been interested in metaphysics all of my life and, and like I believe many people who are here as maybe light workers for the planet um, I always there was a questioning what am I supposed to be doing with my life why am I here and and those have been the philosophical questions that for the ages um, and basically I was in a, a bad relationship. I was in a nine-year relationship. It wasn't a really good relationship. And I think the universe had other plans for me. So basically what happened was that relationship dissolved. It was kind of like the game of, of um, uh, life. It says, you know, do not pass go. Do not collect $200. The life that you know no longer exists, you are starting over from scratch. And I, I was kind of brought to California. Um, I was... Uh, I was able to find some part-time jobs right away t to, to survive and, and start making a living. And um, as I said, then a couple of years later is where I stumbled on this uh, Tantra Yoga training and I started to pursue that and, and that's been, and back in 97, 98 is when the light bulb went off at a intensive, Tantra intensive, and it said, and I was thinking, well this is what I've been looking for my whole life. This is what I really feel is my soul's purpose and my soul's calling. And, you know, I have an interest, I have a passion, I have a love, I have a desire um, for, for as, you know, understanding sexuality and sexual pleasure, and I'm going to go for it. And, I'm, and, and fast forward to, to now, um, you know, I've been, I've been on this path since then, professionally, if you want to say. So exactly. About, uh, I heard 16, and, uh, 16 I'm, years I'm or something I'm sure you like haven't regret, regretted it either. Um, no. I, I, not, not really. It's unusual, and yeah, um. Uh, and uh, Mar well, Mar Margot Anand is actually. Um, I would love to study with her, um, uh, in her program, but you know, I don't know if I'll ever get the chance to. But, but that's actually some good training right there. It seems like to me. I really, um, I highly value her work. She has a background as a psychologist. So when she wrote her first book, The Art of Sexual <clears throat> Ecstasy, I was in her workshops and I was in her classes and things where she was experimenting with these practices or processes that are in her book to see if they worked. And so for her, it was really a scientific investigation, you know, and it was, it's very clearly laid out, you know, this is, this is what we're going to do, these are the materials that you need, this is the length of time that you should kind of plan for it, if you want, this is some suggestions for music, and then at the end it talks about these are remarks or um, experiences that people have um, gotten when they've done these exercises. So I really feel that it's a very well written, laid out book for somebody who wants to try neo tantra. There's again, tantra is about a three thousand, four thousand year old practice that originated in northern India and Kashmir, and it can get very complex and it can be very esoteric. So again, I'm not trained in that type of tantra, but I, my 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 training is in American neo tantra, and my also thought, just to go off on a little aside, Tantra is not a static practice. It's something that's ever evolving. So it, it morphed into Hinduism, and then it went into Tibetan uh, Buddhism. And it, it, and it so kind of like takes on and adapts to what the needs are of the culture. So in America, um, you know, we're sexually repressed. So of course, there is this focus on the sexual aspect of American Neo Tantra, but from there, I be really believe that Tantra is a spiritual practice. It's another piece to help people evolve and to understand who they are as a spiritual being in the human form. 
Absolutely. And I mean, and, you know, anything can be a spiritual practice, uh, just as long as you have that, you you have that intention. But but um, and and that's just it. Um, a lot of people, uh, you know, to them, sex is t even talking about sex is taboo. But it, it's actually it can be one of the most spiritual things you can you can do. Period. Uh, you know, in your life. But uh, al you know, along with all kinds of other stuff. But that's just that's fine. So you know, well, um, well, go ahead. Um, someone when you're with a partner, it dissolves the boundaries around the physical. And you really understand this merging of consciousness with another. And when you're also merged with another, you're also merging with the divine, even though people may not realize that. So, um, you know, we're always talking about love. Um, and, and on the Tantric Intimacy Psychically Fulfilled show, we did have a, a discussion of, of definitions of love and do we really understand what love is, but I won't even go there today right now. Um, but... Again, <laughs> I remember that one. <laughs> yes, um, tantra is a way to reconnect back to oneself, one's divine nature, and through through the dissolution of the physical body, while you are engaged in a intimate physical sexual act, but it's not about the the act itself. It's really about the bodies are connecting. It's, I, I kind of describe it as a plug and socket. If you want to make the lamp work, you have to plug it into the wall, and then you activate the switch to make the electricity or the current flow. So when men and women are coming together, biologically, they're like plug and socket. But most people don't have their switch turned on to make their consciousness flow between the two forms. So... That's something that I help enlighten people with. Got it, got it. <clears throat> what, what, oh. what, other, what, what other things do you... Go ahead. So what I wanted to mention is that um, there is a, a tantric practice, and I had kind of talked about, well, what is sexual meditation? What is this, you know, that I teach? So when I, when I work with a client, you know, one of the first things that I introduce them to is something called this microcosmic practice, which is, comes from the Kashmirian Shaivistic tradition. And um, when I was taught it by, uh, his, my teacher's name was Daniel Odier, and he wrote a, a few books. One was called uh, Tantra Quest, and the other is um, um, Tantra, like the path to uh, desire or something like that. Um, and this is a really simple exercise that people can start to do um, every day. And I give this to my clients. So the exercise is you, turn, you tune into each of the five senses. So we have touch, we have taste, we have smell, we have sight, and we have sound. And, and Daniel said, okay, I want everybody to, he says, this is how you learn how to make love to the world. And everyone's like, well, Daniel, do you want us to go out and, have sex with everybody? And he's like, no, 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 darlings. <laughs> Not that. Um, when you start to engage in the senses, you are getting out of the mind and you're coming into the body. You're actually going from out of left brain analytical thought into more of a physical uh, centered state. So that's one piece. The second thing is um, you don't engage in these practices very long. He says 15, 20, max 30 seconds. These are mini meditations, and if you think of our fast-paced world, we don't have a lot of time to do anything, or we don't have very, we have very short-term attention spans. So this practice is ideal for the Western person. So when you wake up in the morning, let's say you walk into Starbucks and you smell that freshly brewed coffee, so you just breathe it in and really engage with it and notice the smells and, and how your body is experiencing it. Then you let it go and you move on to something Get else. <clears throat> then, oh, you're, you're making me want to drink some coffee. <laughs> well, yes, you can drink your coffee. So then another time you're eating something and it can be a good or bad experience, but you just really tune into it for 15, 20, 30 seconds max, then you drop it. Then later on you're looking at something, tune into it. Oops. Uh, then you're hearing something tuning into it, drop it. So you've done this throughout the day. Then, 
instead of making these practices longer, Daniel said, no, you don't. You add another round. So let's say after a month or two months, now you're doing two rounds of the five senses. So all you're doing is you're helping train your mind to become more attuned and more aware and you're more in touch with your body. Now how I shift this from making love to the world to the bedroom is that your partner is your world. You start to use this meditation in a sexual way. You're going to taste her, you're going to look at her, you're going to smell her, you're going to listen for her sounds or her moans, her pleasures or the, the sounds that are created during your intimate connection. Um, you're going to um, feel her. So all of this, this outside external world practice is something then that you bring in to something more specific. And your love making is deeper. Your love making is more intimate. Your love making is more present. And that's what people are looking for in their life. We're looking for connections with each other. We're looking for that oneness with each other. And this is a really simple practice. And of course, when you have that heart connection with someone, that is a way that you can start to open up and unfold and trust and be with the other. So your life becomes freer. Your life becomes better. Your lovemaking becomes deeper. Your connections are more heartfelt. Your spirit sings. So that that's that's one of the most simplest. And, and and Daniel's last preface was that if that this is all you do as a sexual practice, you can become enlightened. And I'm a lazy practitioner. I've done <laughs> hundreds of workshops. I've gone to many different gurus and teachers. And you know you, you get excited about something and you do it for a little while and then it's like oh it's like it's such a, such a pain in the butt I'm not going to do it anymore. This is something I still do and this is something that I do when I work with clients and this is something that I teach and I really believe in because it it's powerful and I think in in AA they talk about the kiss principle you know keep it simple stupid. This is so simple, but it's so powerful. And you can, like I said, it can be used to engage in life. You, you are learning how to, quote unquote, make love to the world. And then you can learn how to bring this into your bedroom to make love with your beloved, with your partner. Got it, got it. Um, I don't know, uh, and I, I want to thank uh, Christina and Jim for being here. Do you guys have any questions that you want to ask Lori at this point? Um, we have about what twenty minutes left, and um, chat, chatting is working. Okay, okay, thanks, Jim. Um, so, um, all right. What what are other practices that people can do to re and and what you're saying what I hear you saying is that the, some of these practices are 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 showing you are working with you uh, and, and being present and being and being aware becoming aware and expanding your awareness to that beyond you and within you um, and that, that by that by definition by default is is allowing you to be spiritual uh, more in tune more. Uh, more in uh, connected with yourself and others around you. Is that what I hear you saying? Right, and and there's this disconnect in in a lot of the yoga practices as well as in the Christian belief system that the body is evil. The body is this this thing that that oh it was called desire tantric path to awaken. That desire is something that leads us astray. Desire is something that causes us angst. That that creates um, the disharmony in our lives. And another spiritual teacher that I'm studying with says, we need desire. Desire is essential in order to manifest and to create. If there's no desire, we're like consciousness. We're just going to be. But again, in this 
world of matter, we are learning how to be creators, like the divine creator himself. We can create relationship. We can create love. We can create money. And of course, uh, we all have like these little, I call it little computer glitches or viruses that are running through our software here that are preventing us, even though it's something this is that we state that we want. There's something going on that is in the, running in the background that's sabotaging our efforts. So again, um, things that's exactly that need to, how I feel right now. <laughs> you have a regular computer glitch going on in. The, in no, Vavinia, go ahead. <laughs> so, um, four, I use four simple practices. So, again, um, you know, uh, in, uh, and this again comes from Margo's training. Um, I use, I work with breath. I, you know, again, one of my first basic fundamental hatha yoga classes was pr learning pranayama, or uh, prana is this essence of life that, or of God that permeates everything in the universe. And so pranayama is the act of breathing. And as humans and, and primates, which we're a subgroup of, we are unconscious of breathing. It's a hardwired program that's running in our background, in the background of our bodies, that causes us to, um, to exist and live. But when you bring it up to the forefront, when you're conscious of breathing, you can change your physiology. You can change your mental state. You can change your emotional state, and you can also change your energetic or spiritual state. So I work with a breathing practice. The next thing that I incorporate into my sessions when I'm working with someone is the use of mantra or sounds. Sounds are essential. Sounds, right now we're languaging. These are vowels and consonants that were put together to create words so that and then we put meanings to those words. But sounds are primordial vibrations that were that came into existence when the universe came into existence. And so there's certain very simple ones that we that I use that we make um, on a biological level that will help um, open up and activate the nervous system. It gets you out of the kind of like negative thinking process that a lot of people have. Sounds are also tones that um, will affect consciousness. And it also gets you into the right hemisphere of the brain. So it's more body centered, more emotional centered, more energetic. And then um, next thing I work with is movement um, and uh, allowing getting the body to move so the breath will when you are relaxed, and that's really difficult for a lot of people, is to learn how to let go of the tension. So breathing, um, eventually with this breathing practice, people will start to soften their muscles, let the tension go, and their bodies will start to softly, as you inhale, there's an expansion, right? The lungs are increasing, the diaphragm drops, the skeleton is moving because of the muscles and the and the organs connected to it and then as you exhale there's a filling up and a releasing so we're mimicking what is going on in the macrocosm the universe is in a constant state of expansion and contraction when we're in our maya or illusion we're in a state of stuckness and when we're in our ego um, we, we create imbalance and there's no flow. So one of the easiest ways to get out of the psychological process of the mind chatter is to start to focus on the breath, which will then have this biological um, effect of getting the muscles in the body to relax, to help someone become more calm. Um, and then we can start getting the endorphins operating rather than the adrenaline and cortisol. Um, and then on an energetic level, what I teach with the movement, there's uh, something called the yoga bandha. And we're working with uh, the pelvic muscles on a physical level, 
we're doing Kegel exercises, which is a way to strengthen the pelvic muscles. They're, they're intertwined throughout the pelvic floor. And they, those are our love muscles or our sexual functioning muscles. So to tone them is really beneficial for more pleasure and for greater orgasm and for men, orgasm and ejaculation. Um, and then the last okay. piece that I introduce is, is consciousness. It's like the mind has to remain engaged in order to direct these operations. So um, for men, you know, I, I these are four simple things and, and you know, if, if a guy is a, a baseball fanatic, well, the ba game of baseball to me is four simple elements. You know, somebody's batting, somebody's throwing the ball, somebody's trying to catch the ball, and people are running. And how many, you know, baseball games have, have people watched over the years? Thousands. But they're never the same. So you can use these four simple elements. Again, I'm, simplicity is the key to any practice. When it becomes complex, and you start adding on things and making it, you know, more, you know, you know, more intense. Uh, we tend to get lazy and not do them. So again, breathing, sounds, movement, and and consciousness, along with this microcosmic practice. Those are some simple, real, real simple things that I teach in my session, and that are so powerful. I've had people. Energetically, they've had a they've had a release, they've had an experience, and they're literally floating on the ceiling. I have to like scrape them off and bring them back down into their body. That's how um, <laughs> how powerful uh, these these processes are to build up someone's life force, their energy. So anything else that you'd like to know? Uh, no, no. I, 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 so we got about we got about 15 minutes left, and so um, what are maybe that's a good point. What are some of the uh, some of the results that you've seen with people across the board over the years that have been pr uh, predominant that you you know that that uh, you were able to work with them and they were in the right direction, and because of that, they were able to make the changes they needed to be in much better, better shape, much much healthier, and whatever else. Well, I'll just go from uh, a real simple, so as I said, most of my clients are male, and uh, a man comes to me with premature ejaculation, and what I've experienced is that men's ego is very much tied to their sexual performance. So if if a man isn't, <laughs> isn't feeling that he's capable or things are happening really well in bed for him, the rest of his life sucks as well. You know, he can be a successful banker or he can be making money, he can be a venture capitalist, but if his his you know, his love life, his bedroom skills are, are subpar, that doesn't you know, those other things don't have a meaning for him. So um, in fact, premature ejaculation isn't really that difficult to, at least in, in what I've experienced. Uh, now, if it's something more psychological and habitual, because sometimes men can be doing their self-pleasuring and they, they just do it a certain way. They haven't been with a partner for a while. They have to unlearn some things. You know, it's, it's different when you bring in a human being, another human being into your equation. So. Uh, I yeah, kind of okay. talk about what their ritual is like. Um, you know, what do they do? Um, I check and see what their breathing process is. Um, you know, are they connected to their bodies? Do they get distracted easy? Um, you know, what are what is going on, or have they even bothered to look at the process of what is taking place when they are exciting themselves, or what goes on in the bedroom? when they're engaged sexually. So those are some determining factors. But um, for most of my clients, I'd say about a ha I have about a 95% success rate working with men that have rapid ejaculation on the first session that we can get them to last longer. And whether that, you know, lasting longer is five minutes longer or 15 minutes longer or half an hour longer than what they normally done, that's success. Whereas if a man, usually premature ejaculation, it's, it's individual, but, um, uh, you know, the they're saying like the average 
time a man can last in sexual intercourse is of like five minutes or something like that. And I'm like, well, it's as I said, that's that's what I've read on statistics and things. Um, so I can help a gentleman last longer than that. And then there's other factors going on got with it, the relationship. It. What you about know, Wife, well, let me just kind of finish this. He does his wife enjoy sex? That's yeah, another ahead, piece, because again, and when you have a man and woman, um, and you're talking about energy, if a man doesn't have enough of his uh, energy focused, and the woman is focused on, I want to hurry up and get this over with, she it's like she's going to be pulling him to her to make it end quickly. So another piece that I work with in my sessions is learning how to have a conversation and communicate with your partner around what's going on in the bedroom. Being able to ask questions, finding out about the other person's pleasure, what's going on with them, him or her. Sharing your feelings, your desires with the other person, being able to articulate and, and be comfortable with that. Again, um, this is an area I've been working in and delving in for, like I said, most of my life, over 20, 25 years. So I'm very comfortable talking about sex. Um, most people are not. I'm even listening to these programs, um, and you bring up the, the S word, sex, and people are like, oh, oh. And they start making excuses and they watch their body language and they're con being contracted and they're, they're stuttering and, and they're, they're apologizing and, and I, I, it's just like, what is wrong? That's how horrible this energy is that's been created around something that's beautiful and dynamic and, and, and powerful and pleasurable. It's been corrupted in our society. So I'm here to help exactly. heal that, to help change those dynamics. Huh. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Got it. Got it. Um, so, um, anyhow, is, is there any, uh, well, first of all, is there anything, uh, um, any special offers you have to, uh, that you want to make available mm -hmm. to people for the, this webinar series? Well, if someone did you have set up for that? Um, I do, and if you want to go to my website, which is Maha Dakini, that's M A H A D A K I N I dot com. Um, Angie's been really wonderful helping me with my website. Um, I normally charge $125 <laughs> for a uh, phone or Skype coaching session and um, I have a special if you want to book three sessions with me it would be $300 so it's a $75 saving. Um, I don't remember what I have for an in-person uh, coaching session but I will offer a discount or if you say that you saw me on this webinar special I'll give you a nice deep discount. So if you're in the San Francisco area. And also I'd like to uh, let clients know in this <laughs> that I will be in New York. Um, so today is June um, 12th, and I will be in New York from the 15th of June through the 23rd. So if you're on the East Coast and you happen to see this, um, and this is in 2014, so maybe people will see this afterward. But I also do travel. Um, my nose is leaking. I'm flowing <laughs> here. Um, you want to sponsor me to come to your city uh, to do any kind of classes or workshops or talks or even just to have a, um, an intensive, a weekend, a day long kind of uh, you know, immersion with me, um, definitely give me a call and we can talk about prices for that. Okay, good. Um, so is there anything else that we haven't talked about that you we, uh, oh, and, and you're, you're, we're going to be doing the Intimacy, Tantra, Relationship, Psychically Fulfilled show uh, or, or uh, presentation next. Is that right? Well, I thought it was at noon. That's what it said on your schedule, unless it's at, you wanted to be, have it at yeah, 11. Yeah, well, I mean, well, that's, <clears throat> well, no, I'm saying next. Like, we're, that's next oh, up, right. up to okay, back. Okay, next up. Okay, uh, sure. But uh, mm -hmm. that, that, that won't be told any time, and that's, that's correct. So, uh, and we're going to, um, we were going to talk about, 
cheating and um, a couple of other things. I don't, I don't remember. I lost all that stuff. But cheating and affairs. Cheating in monogamous relationship and um, right. affairs. That, okay, that's right. And then, um, and if people are interested in getting a reading or getting a, doing a, a session with us, um, you, you know, it's you know it's free, and w w basically we'll we'll dwell into your relationships uh, status and look at what's going on with it, and then uh, give you some helpful hints to see if, if or suggestions that might be a, um, be useful for you, so that you can uh, work on getting to your next step with with that relationship or out of that relationship. For, for that matter, for sometimes it, it may, but uh, what, you know, whatever it takes for you guys to get move on. So, so if you guys want to stop uh, stop after that, we can we can talk about that as well. So, um, let me see. Um, uh, I'm missing anything. Else. It's we got we got six minutes. Anything else you want to put out there that we haven't talked about? Um. Well, let's just. Uh, everybody speak at once. Well, I was going to say, let me take uh, you, and if anybody out there is listening or if they're listening after this broadcast. Any questions? Um, no, I want to do a little uh, working with sound. So we're going to do a heart opening and a third eye opening exercise. Okay? Would you? Are you good for that? Oh, you want to do that right now? Okay. No. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. And uh, just to let you know, we have oh, – uh, yeah, hang on a second. We have – the relationship sh relationship show, and then we have Gloria Bickham, who's a nurse, who's going to be talking about your feminine on fire at two o'clock, and then a uh, Aiden McDonald, who's going to be talking about the connecting with archangels and the spirit guides uh, at four p.m. So you guys want to come back for that? We can check it out. So go ahead, whenever you're ready. All right. So um, I like everybody to uh, well, I'll explain first. We're going to be working with uh, three sounds. The first sound is whom. And we will be focusing the sound whom in the heart center. So if you like, you can put your hand there when you're saying the sound. So it's spelled H-U-M. It's, it's pronounced like H-O-O-M. So it's a heart activating sound. We'll be saying that three times in the heart. Then we're going to move up to the third eye, and we're going to be saying the sound A-U, A-U, like that. So it's A-H and then O-O-O. And we want to link them together. And that's a sound that um, affects the left and right hemisphere of the brain. And we'll be focusing up in the third eye. For those of you who don't know where the third eye is, it's kind of like in the middle of the forehead and uh, kind of inward about um, an inch or two inches. So it's kind of like where the pineal gland would be. So, And we'll say that three times. And then we'll do two more rounds of that. And then that this that'll be a nice finish. So um, here we want to use the uh, the sounds to connect heart and um, our intuition to be more of a viable, healthy human being. All right. So I'll invite everyone just to uh, you can be laying down, you can be sitting in a chair, and. If you'd like, you can start to close your eyes. Your hands can be on your knees, on your on your lap, palms up or palms down. And now just bring your focus inside of your body. And as you're doing that, start to connect to your breath. Feel the breath coming in. Notice where it flows into the body. And follow the breath as it leaves. Just stay with that flow of in and out for a bit. And you may notice that the breath is slowing down. You may also notice that the body's relaxing. Those are all good things. And if you'd like, you can take one of your hands and you can place it on your heart center if you choose to. You don't need to do that, but if you want to feel your heart, you can. Now let's take our consciousness and just slowly bring it down like on the elevator and you press the button that says H, which means your heart center. And we're just going to breathe in and out to the heart center for a couple of times. And just notice that connection between your hand and your heart that's flowing back and forth. And again, settling deeper into your body. 
body relaxing even more. And I'll just do the sounds and you can listen to them. So I'm going to inhale the breath. Feel the sound going deep into your heart. Feeling the sound. Now move your attention up to your third eye, and I'll be saying the sound ah, uh, ooh, and feel it being projected into your brain, into where the pineal gland is. Ah, uh, ooh. Feel the sound going deep into your third eye. Ah, uh, ooh. Feeling the sound. Oh. Now let's move back down to the heart center, focusing there. Ooh. Feeling the sound. Um, sound going inward. Um, back up to the third eye, focusing there. Uh, Sound moving inward. Oh. Feeling the sound. Oh. Last time, focusing on the heart. Feeling the sound. Feeling the heart. Moving again to the third eye. Uh, feeling the sound. Uh, sound filling the third eye. Uh, So sitting with these vibrations of opening the heart center and opening your capacity to experience more of the divine. And when you're ready, you can slowly start to move your hands or feet, moving and wiggling a little bit, stretching. And slowly open your eyes and coming back to present time, present space into the now. So how is everyone doing? Are you with me, Andrew? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm here. So how was that? Uh, 
So we're at, we're actually three minutes over time, and I want to thank mm -hmm. everybody for being here. Again, we're doing we're mm -hmm. doing the relationship show uh, next, and so um, you can stop by then. So have a God Goddess weekend week. Be the love that you are, always have been, and always will be. Aloha. Oh my God, this is so slow. Okay. Good.